and welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today we are going to be talking about the Industrial Revolution and this was an important time in history because it was really a time where we um, as civilization went from using and making things by hand to making things using machines. So I'll, we're going to doodle through three of these major inventions during this time of the many. There are many, but we're going to specifically talk about three. So I'm excited to get started with you and start doodling through this. So let's jump right in. This was a period of time that started in the 1760s and it really was an acceleration of the process of technical innovation and it brought forth many new tools and machines which added to the toolbox of technology and changed everyday life for humankind. The first main invention that we are going to talk about today helped to spur the Industrial Revolution and it was called the steam engine. James Watt was the inventor of this steam engine and had a background as a mathematical instrument maker making things like compasses and scales. While repairing a Newcomen steam engine in 1764, he was surprised at the waste of steam. After wrestling with how to make it better, he suddenly came to a solution involving a separate condenser. Shortly afterward, he met British physician, chemist, and inventor John Roebuck, the founder of the Karen Works who urged him to make an engine. He entered into partnership with him in 1768, but Watt had become a land surveyor in 1766, and for the next eight years, he was continuously busy marking out routes for canals in Scotland. This work prevented him from making further progress with the steam engine. After Roebuck went bankrupt in 1772, English manufacturer and engineer Matthew Bolton took over a share in Watt's patent. Bolton's financial support made possible rapid progress with the engine. Overall, this changed many industries greatly during this time period. It was both more efficient and more cost effective than earlier models of engines. Watt's steam engine opened up an entirely new field of application. It enabled the steam engine to be used to operate rotary machines in factories, such as cotton mills. The next invention that helped to spur the Industrial Revolution is Eli Whitney's cotton gin. This invention revolutionized the production of cotton by greatly speeding up the process of removing seeds from cotton fiber. Eli Whitney grew up as the son of a farmer and in his youth proved to already be an excellent inventor by building a nail forge and a violin. He graduated from Yale College and moved to the South planning to work as a tutor. He accepted an invitation to stay at Catherine Green's house, the widow of American Revolutionary War General Nathaniel Green, on her plantation known as Mulberry Grove near Savannah, Georgia. While there, Whitney learned about cotton production in particular, the difficulty cotton farmers faced making a living. It is important to note that some historians actually believe Catherine Green devised the cotton gin and Eli Whitney merely built it and applied for the patent since at that time women were not allowed to file for patents. 
Others believe the idea was Whitney's, but Green played an important role as both designer and financer. But these are just speculations and none of it is proven. So the credit historically goes to Eli Whitney. This invention called the cotton gin worked something like a strainer or sieve. Cotton was run through a wooden drum embedded with a series of hooks that caught the fibers and dragged them through a mesh. The mesh was too fine to let the seeds through, but the hooks pulled the cotton fibers through with ease. Smaller gins could be cranked by hand, larger ones could be powered by a horse, and later by a steam engine. One negative result of the cotton gin's success, however, was that it helped strengthen slavery in the South. Although the cotton gin made cotton processing less labor intensive, it helped planters earn greater profits, promoting them to grow larger crops, which in turn required more people. Because slavery was the cheapest form of labor, cotton farmers simply acquired more slaves. But it meant that cotton could be produced plentifully and cheaply for domestic use and for export. And by the mid 19th century, cotton was America's leading export. For the North, especially New England, cotton's rise meant a steady supply of raw materials for its textile mills. And that brings us to our third invention that helped spur the Industrial Revolution, and that was Edmund Cartwright's power loom. First, we need to talk about what a loom is. Some of you may already know, but a loom is a device that is used to weave together threads in order to produce a fabric. Traditional hand looms were slow and required several laborers to operate. Cartwright's invention of the power loom was significant because it used a mechanical process to automate much of the weaving process. While working for the church, Cartwright visited a man named Richard Arkwright's cotton spinning mills and saw the cotton spinning machines in action. After seeing the spinning machines, Cartwright thought that he could make something similar for weaving and so was inspired to create a machine called the power loom. He began working on the designs of the machine in 1784 and fully built it in 1785. Many people thought that Cartwright would not be able to make a machine that was able to weave automatically, but he did. Cartwright overall did not benefit much from his invention of the power loom or make a lot of money from it. But even after Cartwright died in 1823, the power loom went on to have a profound impact on industrial production through the 19th century. For instance, in 1803, there were just 2,400 power looms in all of Britain. But by 1833, there was as many as 100,000 in use across the textile factories of Britain. And that is all for today. I challenge you all to, at home, look up some of the inventions that were invented during this time period and made the Industrial Revolution so significant. I look forward to joining you in this and looking up and learning alongside with you. And on that note, be kind, follow God's will, and take care.